The methodical design of beginner learning in table tennis is very important. After the 10 exercises of part 1 of this 3 video clip series, in this part 2 video you will watch the next 8 exercises. In addition, you will get to know important background information about why and how to play these exercises. During all exercises players try to perform 10 consecutive successful strikes without a mistakes to reach the next level or exercise. During this exercise the backhand topspin is played diagonal and the training partner blocks back with backhand block. It's the easiest situation to learn the main movement characteristics of a backhand topspin. Because of the longer distance in the diagonal, players have more time to react and to move. In exercise or level 12, the players try to perform a forehand topspin and a backhand topspin alternately one by one in the backhand side. There are different footwork patterns to solve the situation, but in my opinion the use of two small side jumps is the perfect way to find the most accurate position to perform the next strike. That's because after the first small jump the ball comes nearer and the anticipation of the player is more accurate so that the second jump can bring you in the best position. Pay attention that players move and stay behind the table during this exercise because it's a common mistake that players move too close and besides, not behind, the table especially during the forehand topspin. During level or exercise 13, forehand topspins should be played one time diagonal and one time parallel so that the training partner plays forehand block diagonal and backhand block parallel in the forehand side of the topspin player. It's important to be able to control and vary the placements of a topspin. This exercise helps players to learn that for a change of the placement it's necessary to change the timing and hip movement during the forehand topspin. Exercise 14 is the same as exercise 13 but with the backhand topspin so that the training partner plays the backhand block diagonal and the forehand block parallel into the backhand side. During the backhand topspin it's important to hold a stable elbow position as well as stability in the hip and shoulder axis to control the desired placement. Changes in timing and the pointing with the tip of the racket to the desired placement at the end of the forward swing helps to find the right placement. During exercise 15 the players combine the forehand topspin diagonal and the backhand topspin parallel one by one. That's why this training method is called combined regular. The training partner plays the forehand block diagonal and parallel. It's important to learn a smooth and consistent transition between the forehand topspin and the backhand topspin because in an open rally it is often needed. Pay attention that players shift their racket to the other side above the table so that the distance and time keeps short. Exercise or level 16 is the same as exercise 15 but now the forehand topspin is played parallel and the backhand topspin is played diagonal while the training partner blocks backhand parallel and diagonal. It is important to stabilize both strikes and the transition between with this combined regular method so that the technique can be developed especially when these exercises are played with more quality which means more speed and spin. Pay also attention to the kind of block that is played during this exercise. While at the beginning it should be a passive block for beginners, later the block should be more active and spinny so that the topspin player has to adapt timing and movements. 
During level 17 and 18, the training method changes from combined regular to combined irregular, which brings a shift in the function of the exercises. While during the regular performance of strikes, the technique stability was in focus, now anticipation, reaction and perception processes are predominantly practiced. In exercise 17, the forehand topspin is played parallel and the backhand topspin diagonal and during exercise 18, vice versa. It is clearly to see that these beginners have problems to anticipate and react, but it is a good training stimulus because free play is also irregular. In that stage of learning, the amount of regular and irregular exercises should be balanced to stabilize techniques on the one hand and to make them available for play on the other hand. The irregular situation has also an additional influence on the striking and footwork techniques because it is clearly recognizable that players have problems to perform stable movements in the corners and to go back in a ready position between the strikes. Thanks for watching, have fun during training and please subscribe and ring the bell.